So hello viewers and welcome to AgroLink and AgroLink is brought to you by the Association of African Universities and today we are on the premises of RMG, RMG Ghana Limited and we are going in there to talk to some few managers there on how to promote agricultural production in Africa. Make sure that you follow us and then log on to our Facebook page Association of African Universities and then AU underscore 67 on Twitter. Join me in as we have chat chat with the managers in RMG on how to promote agriculture in Africa. Stay tuned. and welcome to another exciting episode of AgroLink. And AgroLink is brought to you by the Association of African Universities Headquarters here in Accra, Ghana. AgroLink seeks to profile um, agricultural institutions and also make sure that we are able to promote agricultural innovation in Africa. And today we are so much privileged to be hosted by RMG Ghana and RMG is the regional marketing group. And we are privileged also to be speaking to the marketing manager in the person of Mr. Nyako Della, and he's going to tell us more about um, RMG Ghana and what they do to support or promote agriculture in Africa. Good day, Mr. Della. Thank you. How are you doing, sir? I'm fine. And Good. how are you? I'm also doing very well. Great, yeah. We, we are so much happy and privileged to be in your office to talk about or to discuss with you um, important issues concerning agricultural production in Africa. But because you are a, a marketing institution will be looking at how your institution is well placed to make sure you provide that service to the promotion of agriculture on the continent. But before we do that, um, definitely you may tell us something brief about RMG Ghana. Yeah, thank you very much. I mean, you are at the right place, okay. and I think we are the one of the best agriculture company in Ghana. Okay. So you cannot go without us for okay. such a program, mm -hmm. and we. A privilege to have you here. So briefly, I'll say RMG Ghana Limited is an agriculture input company in the country, mm. one of the best. We deal in importation and distribution of agricultural inputs. We have a wide range of our inputs that we deal with. Okay. Um, some more we talk of what are the inputs you are dealing in, we'll say we have one of the best fertilizers in the country. Mm. We also have a whole range of pesticides mm. for agricultural production. We also deal in equipment. We talk of spraying machines. We are the best. Okay. Again, we have our irrigation department mm. because you know about the um, climatic conditions and all the global warming exactly. which is affecting mm. agricultural production. Mm -hmm. So we have a department that handles irrigation mm -hmm. and we have a system that can irrigate 60 hectares okay. of uh, farmland. farmland okay. And that system is called the pivot irrigation system. Okay. We also have the drip irrigation system mm -hmm. that also we have in our portfolio of inputs. Okay. And we talk of seed. Seed is the key, the heart of agriculture because exactly. with that seed, mm -hmm. I mean, what are you doing? You need to plant the seed for it to germinate, for you to get your yield. Sure. So we, yeah, if you come to seed, you cannot go by not mentioning RMG Ghana Limited. Okay. We have our hybrid maize seed mm -hmm. and we have hybrid um, rice seed mm -hmm. and we also have a vegetable seed. Okay, so do you focus only on cash crops or um, other, other seeds as well? No, we, we focus on a, a range of crops. Okay. We, we, do, we have input for cocoa. Okay. We also have input for maize. We have input for um, rice. Mm -hmm input for vegetables. Okay. So let's say we have all the range. Ranges. Yeah, we don't focus on only cash crops, but okay. all crops. Okay, yeah. so you made mention of the fact that you, you import and export um, agricultural products, right? No, we import and distribute. You distribute, okay, yeah. so where do you import them from? Which, which countries we, do you have partnerships with? We, we partner leading companies in the world. Mm. You talk of um, Syngenta, mm -hmm. you talk of Bia, Bia is in Germany. We talk of um, Goispa. Mm -hmm. They are into manufacturing spring machines. They are based in Spain. Mm -hmm. We talk of Pana. Okay. We talk of Pana and Panian seeds. Okay. They are based in South Africa. We talk of um, our fertilizer, which comes from Nigeria, Russia, 
Morocco. You talk of our another spraying machine called Shogun, which is also coming from Spain. Mm -hmm. So in all, we cut across the globe. Okay. We deal with um, leading manufacturer of inputs okay. from across the globe. Okay, so are you a government-based institution or a private? Um, based no, one? we are a private entity. Okay, yeah. but you have the the backing of the government to distribute all that. Definitely, because to become an agriculture company in the country, mm. you need to register. Before they need to register as a company, mm -hmm. as the company in a, in the country, you need okay. to do, go through the normal process of registration. Mm -hmm. You need also to register all your products with the appropriate institutions, UPA. You need to also register your products also with PPRSD. Mm -hmm. So we have the backing of the states. Okay. Yeah. And, and how do you mobilize the farmers in terms of your distribution channel? Um, I must say our business are uh, into, let's say, three folds. We have the government business okay. and we also have the private business and we also have the associations. Mm -hmm. When it comes to government business, we also are part of the, the fertilizer subsidy program okay. and the seed subsidy program where we also supply our inputs mm -hmm. to the state for also onward distribution to the farmers. Mm -hmm. So we are part of the Planting for Food and Jobs program. Okay, for the government of Ghana? For the government of Ghana. Okay. When it comes to the, our own distribution network, we deal with distributors across the country mm -hmm. where we distribute our products through them. We have also exclusive shops named RMG Ghana Limited in partnership with some distributors. Mm -hmm. They only sell our products. We again also have uh, our van system. Mm -hmm. We moves to certain specific areas that the farmers cannot have access to products. Mm -hmm. So we develop the market there, then we find and plant a distributor there, then we move to the next area. Okay. Yeah. So do you receive um, support from the government in terms of um, finance to make sure that um, the products that you import into the country are subsidized for the farmers? Yeah, so that's why we are part of the subsidy program. So okay. for the subsidy program, there's mm -hmm. a support in terms of, you are not the only company involved in the subsidy. There mm -hmm. are a lot of companies also involved in subsidy. Okay. So there's always um, government support in that area. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So what makes IMG different from the other um, players in the same sector? Um, we are very innovative okay. because we strategically partner from our associations mm -hmm. that will give them inputs. So we grow with the associations. Mm -hmm. So we have been working with Masara in the north, Copa okay. Baropa in the cocoa sector. Mm -hmm. We also work with Copa Connect mm -hmm. in the voter region for rice. So they are all former associations okay. that will give inputs on credit. Okay. So then they will return the produce mm -hmm. and that produce we have Winko as the optica to sell that produce mm -hmm. on the market. Okay, so what informs your mode of operation? Why do you import seeds? Why do you import fertilizers? Why do you import the key things, the irrigation materials? Why do you bring them into the country even in the first place? Yeah, because um, we don't have the capacity okay. to produce some of the inputs mm -hmm. and all companies are dealing with the manufacturers. So just like automobile, okay. I mean everybody is bringing Benz, Toyota to the country. Country. So definitely, we need to also import because mm -hmm. we don't have the capacity to produce. So in terms so, of seeds, um, we yeah. don't have the capacity to yes, come up. Yes, we with. have we have our capacity to produce, and we have mm -hmm. our seed production unit that okay. is working on that one. Because our thinking and our going forward, we need to be able to produce our own hybrid seeds, mm -hmm. and we are working towards that very well. And recently, we were able to even release a locally produced seed by RMG Ghana in the country, okay. which is a hybrid maize seed. Mm -hmm. So we are not only looking at only importing our seed, we are also looking at also developing our lines and also producing it locally. Okay, so yeah. in terms of the local content, how far have we gone? Or oh, we are just at the, at the scratch or the baseline trying mm -hmm. to... No, 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 if you talk about local content, in terms mm -hmm. of actual inputs, mm -hmm. for us, we see it as a as something that we have to develop. Okay. Yeah. So our aim is to develop it to the extent that at least the co local content should be thirty to forty percent. Okay. Yeah. It, across all the the your your services. Because yeah. Because you know we we have uh, most of the time we have in foreign breeds of of seeds. Even in terms of animals, we have foreign breeds coming into the system. But we feel that we have what it takes. Um, to, to, to engineer production 
in our country without going in for some of the foreign ones that we have. For example, with rice, uh, we know we have local seeds that could come up with greater yield without the, the foreign ones. I don't know what you make of that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, you may be right or you may be wrong, right? Okay. But that's why we are saying we are not solely looking at always importing our seeds. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because even with the, the seed um, protocol, there's mm. the regulations that encourages seed production. We are a member of NASDAQ, okay. National Association of Seed Traders in the country. Mm -hmm. We also have our own system that we even have mandated mm -hmm. um, seed producers to produce seed for us. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to our seed portfolio, and I must say, let's say for the seed that we do, we do 50-50. Mm -hmm. So we have the local content that okay. we have seed producers producing our rice seed for us. Mm -hmm. And I've also said that we have been able to even release a seed, local seed variety for maize. Mm -hmm. and we are the only first company, private company to, to have come up with that innovation, with that innovation mm -hmm. to be able to release a seed in the country. Okay. We also have been able to release other varieties in mm -hmm. partnership with our uh, your, your external partners, partners. Stakeholders. Yeah, stakeholders. Okay. So for the seed, I must say, 50-50% in terms of our portfolio, mm -hmm. we have 50-50, mm -hmm. yeah, well, local content and the okay. foreign content. Quick as across the cereals, the vegetables? Um, yeah, because to be frank with you, we yeah. even have a local um, variety for pepper, we call it Shita Adupe. Okay. This was a collaborative um, effort between RMG and the, C, the Crop Research Institute, yeah, okay. Shita Adupe. Yeah. Okay, I think that that's amazing. Let, let's come to the state of agriculture in Ghana. I know per where you said you may have a broader view of the state of agri in Ghana. What would be your perspective? I must say, still, we have a lot to do to develop agriculture. If all efforts, mm -hmm. all policies are geared towards agriculture production, because you look at the dynamics, they will say Ghana is 60-70% agriculture company. Mm -hmm. You go to other countries, mm -hmm. it's only 3-4% involved in agriculture. Mm -hmm. They are feeding the whole country. So what is, what is keeping people out? There should be so many things. There should be policies that would attract a lot of the stakeholders to mm -hmm. go into agriculture. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, sometimes you want to get a loan from the bank. They see it as a risky venture. Okay. But there are so many innovations. There are so many technologies. There are so many um, inputs mm -hmm. that is available that can enhance agriculture production. So if all stakeholders will see agriculture as the driver of our economy, Mm -hmm. That will be good because we have the soil, mm -hmm. we have the weather, we have the water bodies. If we don't destroy it by other means, it's available for us. Mm -hmm. The support and the drive and the policy, then I think we will be there. So you think we don't have that support? We have the support because there are so many programs that government have undertaken. Exactly. Yeah, so many projects mm -hmm. and currently the major one running is the planting for food, food and jobs. Yeah. I might not be able to talk about the past. Mm -hmm. I mean, let's deal with the current yeah, the situation, okay. which is encouraging a lot of food production. Mm. So if that is well implemented and mm -hmm. everybody is on board, mm -hmm. that would be one of the good uh, avenue to increase production. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And so, also government mm -hmm. policy of um, making fertilizer mm -hmm. available. I mean, that is also a way of also encouraging increasing production. Government also policy of also getting good seed, mm -hmm. improved seed for farmers, mm -hmm. if that also is done vigorously or um, pursued, okay. that will also increase our production. Yeah. So it's a collaborative effort between the stakeholders. Mm -hmm. We have the financial institution who need to understand agriculture, not as a risky mm -hmm. venture, but as a means to ensure food security but, for but, us. So why is it that most often than not, the, the, the financial institutions, the banks and what have you, are not so much confident in releasing funds into the agricultural sector? What, what, what may uh, be the, uh, their uh, reason? Well, I might also say that you know, the, we have specific banks into agriculture, which was mm -hmm. ADB, yes, and then, but and others would like to come on board mm -hmm. to finance agriculture production. Some also look it at risky because they look at it's rain fed. Mm -hmm. They look at the weather. Exactly. And they also look at the farmer base. You know, now that we are encouraging farmer associations, mm -hmm. 
because the bank will look for other um, collaterals which the farmer or may not may have. have. Mm. But what will be the security or surety for them that if I give out inputs, mm -hmm. if I give out a funds mm -hmm. or loan to support agricultural production, will, will I be able to make my money back? Mm -hmm. So then what the banks are now doing is to partner known agricultural input companies mm -hmm. to ensure that they have a farmer base registered, that they can be able to return back their money. Okay. Because you know the banks are also working, the financials are also working with people's money. Mm -hmm. They also look at the weather. They think that if the weather fails, there will be no what, yield. Mm -hmm. And therefore it's the produce that will bring the returns. So they also look at the weather, and they cannot really predict the weather. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, it encompasses a lot of things, not only the financial institutions. Sure. Our weather system, do we have accurate data? Can we have somebody who will be able to predict that from January to February, this is the weather pattern, March to uh, June, this is the weather pattern mm -hmm. available, so that when you are doing production, you are assured of what? Uh, your yield. Mm. So in our small ways, that's why we are saying that we also have introduced irrigation system mm -hmm. that will support agriculture production. So if you have a huge irrigation system, then that has been solved. Mm -hmm. Because the farmer, financial institution, the input provider knows that there is enough water mm -hmm. available okay. to irrigate the crops to get the yield. Okay. Yeah. So per what you said again, what do you think is is the, is the top priority in the agricultural space. You know, we have the farmers, we have the, the farm, um, prod, uh, how do you call it, the machines and everything. Per our current situation in Ghana, where do we lack the most? And where must we invest the more? I would like to say we need to invest in all the areas. Yes, but yes. In, in the midst of uh, sure. scarcity, uh, what, which one should we give much more preference to? I would have wished that we should even propagate youth or not even youth, any entrepreneur, mm -hmm. anyone who has money to go into agriculture production. Mm -hmm. If we are able to drum, because now you get people and interview them, what's your first job? They will think about, I want to work in the financial institution. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because but farming has not been repackaged. Repackaged, well. exactly. yes. So if it's been repackaged mm -hmm. well, that's why in our own ways, we are trying to even repackage farming as an attractive business. And how, 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 how do you and do that? We are even having a whole field that we call it living fields. Living, okay. Living fields, where we are strategically going to have over, the first phase is going to be 100 acres, and that will be replicated across the country. Mm. There will be a hosted facility. Okay. We will have interested um, graduates mm -hmm. to come in and a plot to be allocated to you, a plot, mm. then you are going to farm. So when you farm, you get your produce. We are looking at you learning agriculture, mm -hmm. developing the interest in agriculture. Then after a year or two, you leave the, uh, as an, the place, mm -hmm. as an, uh, a host kind of an incubation area. Okay. Then strategically, you have developed the interest. Mm. So if you get three or four people living that place, they can come together get a, a track of land mm. and start producing. That's what we need. So at the end of the day, you get people who can then employ people to what, go into agriculture. That alone, for him to develop the interest, for him to have it, ah, that's doing this, I'm better off. Why should I be moving around, searching for job? Mm -hmm. Two, we have decision makers. Not everybody who might come from the house will go into what? Production. production okay. Somebody will be a decision maker maybe in a financial institution, mm. or maybe in government, or be in someone who knows the benefit of agriculture. Mm -hmm. So based on that experience, when anything related to agriculture, you can roll back that experience and make a decision that will favor agriculture production. Mm -hmm. So if you're able to do all those things, then if you're able to encourage our educational system to see agriculture as a business, to see mm -hmm. agriculture not as a punishment, mm -hmm. but as a business that when you go into agriculture, those are the benefits. I always say there are certain countries that have competitive advantage 
Certain countries are into automobiles. Certain mm -hmm. countries are into electronics. Africa, and for that matter, Ghana, agriculture is our main stake. Exactly. We have been producing cocoa for years now, and cocoa mm -hmm. has been our bean, our, the, the, the backbone of our economy. Our economy. Mm -hmm. It's an agriculture-based product, mm -hmm. right? So if we put all our efforts into developing agriculture, to making it attractive, mm -hmm. that's the breakthrough for our economy. So that's every government would like to what put more effort into agriculture production. Okay. So then you made mention of a, a, a good point where we should encourage the young people to go into agriculture. But I have seen a lot of adverts on televisions. I've heard a lot of ministers, people speak about the fact that we need to encourage our young people to go into agriculture. Yet, we don't have that kind of drive and enthusiasm to go into, into agriculture. What will you do specifically or uniquely to ensure that you're able to sustain that drive and encourage young people to go into the adventure. Um, I mentioned the Living Fields mm -hmm. system where we, we, are, we will be housing young graduates, mm -hmm. young people mm -hmm. per criteria to stay in the house. Yes, that is one intervention. Intervention. Yeah. Yeah. Also, we have a partnership with the mm -hmm. youth in agriculture. Mm -hmm. In that partnership, we they provide input. We also provide technical support. We provide our team. So we get the input and we partner them. And we have done this partnership for two years now in maize production mm -hmm. and rice production. Mm -hmm. And it's targeted to the youth. And this partnership has really, really, really been very fruitful. Now, within the northern part of the country, mm -hmm. within the Sasala East and Sasala West with the area, we have a lot of youth going into maize production mm -hmm. based on this partnership. When you come to the BEA, we come to the Ashanti region, Ashanti region okay. within the Ejira enclave, within the Atebubu, yeah. Amantin, that zone. We also have commercial partners. And all these commercial partners are youth, mm -hmm. like us, who yeah, are people. leading the drive there. Okay. So we have them, we call them commercial partners mm -hmm. that we are working with. We give them the inputs through partnership with the youth in agriculture, mm -hmm. then they cultivate. Okay. So at the end of the day, then they will have to pay back the input with the produce. Okay, so I've um, spoken to a lot of young people um, across the various regions in Ghana, and then some, do, especially those who study agriculture in the um, higher institutions and they, they graduate. The basic problem is that we try to invest so much into coming up with the best seeds, coming up with the, the farm products and everything, but our challenge has been the storage and the marketing um, process. For example, some few months ago we had watermelon uh, a bumper harvest watermelon across the the, the the country, but you just go to the market scenes and most of them get rotten. What are some of the interventions to make sure that we're able to store or, or save our food product for the scarce period as well? Yeah, I would like to say um, this has not been uh, just yesterday's uh, or just today's issue. issue. Exactly. It's been part of our, 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 our agriculture system. Mm. When you study agriculture in the first year, I think someone will say agriculture 101. We will talk mm -hmm. about production and mm -hmm. uh, storage. All exactly. those things have, have been lectured. Mm -hmm. And also, we have, I think um, the institutions are now bringing up post harvest technology mm -hmm. as a course. But this all involves the, 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 the various stakeholders in the chain. Okay. One, there should be an off taker will be available to uptake the produce. Mm. There should be an accessibility from the farm gate to what? The market. Mm. The produce can be at the farm gate. How accessible is it back to the optica? Mm -hmm. When the optica comes, which are the other markets? Do we have enough um, uh, markets in terms mm -hmm. of uh, shops, supermarkets? Yes, also, do that up, up, also taking it up mm -hmm. and what? selling. Mm -hmm. Do we have enough processing companies? Because we used to have a lot of the processing companies which will process our tomato, mm -hmm. will process uh, our maize, will process even cocoa. That has been our major. We yeah. still are not processing enough here in Ghana. In Ghana. Sure. So it's, 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 it's a chain of issues. We need to get investors who will have interest mm -hmm. in processing um, this produce, we need to revive all our companies, all our industries, all mm -hmm. our factories mm -hmm. 
that are involved in the processing. What will be available? Because it also involve government. Government also giving all the necessary incentives mm -hmm. to these uh, companies to ensure what our import strategy. Because you know we are in the global village, we are in the global world. Exactly. We, are, we don't we even determine the market, market price and everything. Sure. Mm -hmm. We sign to world trade. Mm -hmm. And you cannot say, I'm not allowing this A or B. But what we can also do is to the mindset of the Ghanaian. Mm. Eat local. Eat local. Because you develop your market when people start chasing a product from your country, mm -hmm. a produce from your country. If you have a lot of local rice available, and all the Ghanaians, all Ghanaians say, look, I'm going to eat local rice. What happens? People will start producing local rice. But if our taste is foreign, mm -hmm. then you force people to import. Mm -hmm. If our taste is to go for processed juice in bottle, you, you force people to import. Yes, but you are a major player in the field. What can you do? Because we've heard some of these statements over and over again. For example, um, when you travel across the continent, rice, for example, in Nigeria, they eat their local rice. When you go to Tanzania, all the major African countries, they eat their own local rice. But it seems to be different in Ghana. And then we keep on outlining interventions and everything. But what must be done to ensure that, I mean, if, if, you don't, if I go to the market and I don't find the, the foreign rice on the market, and I have enough of the local rice on the market, I will, I will be forced to buy. But in situations where the local rice, we are not producing them, when I go to the market, I will just find myself buying sure. the foreign rice. Um, I must say, we, this is kind of a, a sea. Mm -hmm. And we are also part of the but in our own way, that's why I talk about the Weta Rice Project, mm -hmm. the Copa Connect. We have farm associations that produce local rice for us. We call it Idianehine mm. Rice. We have our local maize also coming from the north. So in our own way, we are, we, we are doing the input at the same time, ensuring that the production is done here and we bring it onto the markets. Mm -hmm. This is our system. But we alone cannot be able to solve the problem of the whole country. Exactly. So should we get about 10 or five, 10 or 20 of us doing the same, we have enough production of what that particular brand on the market. Mm -hmm. But mind you, it's just like our clothes, African wear. Mm -hmm. You know, at a point, I mean, people don't even wear the African print. Mm -hmm. But there was a point that you said Friday wear mm -hmm. that started encouraging more people to go into wearing Friday wear, and I think that is also helping out. But what we need to know is you produce, you need to get people also to appreciate that produce. That product, okay. You let people also say, Wow, let's eat local, let's take our local food, let's encourage people to eat our local produce. That's the way forward because now. There are a lot of processed food that people would like to do fast food mm -hmm. and go. I mean, just bump in, pick one or two, it's gone. Mm -hmm. And most of these are always imported, right? But what can we do? Because it's all about the mindset. I'm saying if you don't have the issue... You see, the, the mindset will never change. I mean, if I go to Accra Mall and I find a, a long grain rice from Thailand mm -hmm. and then I find one in Ghana, okay, you have given me that choice. I will pick the one from, from Thailand because I am assured of the quality. I'm assured of the taste. But if I go there and I don't find any rice product from Thailand and all that I see is Ibrahim on the market, I, will, I won't go back home hungry. I will pick it up. Uh -uh. So why don't we put in strategies to make sure that we cut down a lot of the, the import that come into the system and encourage our local farmers to produce more? I think that, that, that demand and supply... Yes, I understand is the point. That, you know, that's what I'm saying. It's a, it's a chain of um, stakeholders because mm -hmm. in our small way, this is what we've done. Mm -hmm. When you talk about importation of imp products into the country, we don't control. Mm -hmm. It's policy. What has the country assigned itself to? Mm -hmm. it's so, there are so many dynamics when it comes to importation, right? But... I will always say that what are the campaign? Mm -hmm. Right? Because we have our core business to do. Mm -hmm. There should be another campaign. There should be a movement that, look, 
this is the direction you are going. It's local, and these are the benefits. Mm. So once we start drumming it, I mean, you can start from the kindergarten yeah. up to, by the time we get to SS, that's always, when you see local made in Ghana, it mm -hmm. is the best, always. At the end of the day, when the person is making decision, he knows mm -hmm. that I have to go for my local produce. But Mr. Yaku, don't you think we've done a lot of these? Um, I've seen most of these adverts on TV. I've seen all the policies. Everyone you interview will tell you it's a policy thing. But I believe that if the Ministry of Agriculture is calling for a stakeholder meeting, RMG is a key, a key player there. And everybody will all seem to be dancing around. That's the same concept. Yes, that's Don't you what think we we've see. given so much liberty or, or freedom? We are not tackling the issue of making sure that, look, within this month we are not bringing these products or we are gradually reducing the importation and improving um, the local brands that we have. It looks like we, ha we are not so much there to take that difficult decision or that yeah, boost. Yeah, that, you are right, but that, that, that's, that's, that's policy, government policy. That's, that's the decision of the states and what we as ascribe ourselves to. Mm. That's why we are seeing our own ways. This is what we have done. Okay. But when it comes to, I mean, cutting certain importation, mm. I mean, there was this hula balo about trade, mm. the other foreigners into our trade. But there are certain yes. countries who don't allow certain products to no, come not in. Not at all. And that's government's decision. Mm -hmm. That cannot be a decision of a small company. So why can the government of Ghana take that decision? That should be government. For example, in Nigeria, you can they do you can't import rice. They that's, eat their local rice. Go back to when Tanzania, uh, uh, Rwanda wanted to do away with 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 the secondhand clothing, they banned it and they made sure that their local content is 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 kind of um, enhanced. Why can't the government do same? I, I'm sorry to say I can't answer you know. that. <laughs> that I can't give mm -hmm. an answer to that particular mm -hmm. <laughs> state. Why government cannot do? I think the, this should be in the our, our leaders should be mm -hmm. in the best position to make those decisions. Why they are not allowing or why they are not banning certain okay. products or produce from certain countries? Okay. Where they don't have a list of banned products. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you talk about the poultry industry, the poultry industry also is crying exactly. about importation of uh, the chicken yeah, exactly mm -hmm. but there's somebody there's another school of thought that says we don't have enough capacity to like to, we don't have enough production and if we don't have that chicken to supplement diet of kids we end up also having malnutrition mm -hmm. for kids so there are so so many dynamics when it comes to importation of mm -hmm. products yeah. so some countries have the I might see the power or may have the the strength mm. to be able to say I'm not allowing this to come in based on A, B, C and their geographical location, mm -hmm. their competitive advantage, uh, whatever they can benefit at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. But I might not be able to talk for Ghana in terms of search okay. banding of this. I know if the search decision there might be certain benefit that might come with it. There might be de certain disadvantage. So I think the state will have to weigh all options available mm. and know what to do at a particular time. Okay. I'm sorry I'm asking you a lot of hard questions because I know where you sit, you are, uh, you are an influential player. You made a good example using the poultry um, scenario. Do you, don't you think that the, the Poultry Farmers Association of Ghana or the people who go into poultry farming, uh, they have the capacity if they are given the full attention, they have the capacity to feed the, the, the market in Ghana and even export. Yeah. I mean, that's what I will always say. If, if we have, we see our culture as business and we always provide the necessary interventions mm -hmm. and we go by that intervention, mm -hmm. I mean, why not? Because we have all the, uh, the, say the, the environment is conducive sure. to be able to uh, produce enough to feed so that's the we need to get all the structures we need to get because you know for the poultry it also links to agriculture there should be enough means for them exactly so you cannot develop the whole setup that you have the high trees you have the feed you have mm. before they can even do the feed you need to get enough meat into the system mm -hmm. you understand exactly so it plays so more like a, it, a food chain a food chain mm. so the poultry industry can never try without getting enough of their uh, feed 
mm. from the production of maize, you, you need to have enough production for soya. Which I believe we can produce. We can produce maize enough. Mm. So it, it interlinks. Okay. So all those sectors, so you cannot develop one sector mm -hmm. thinking that I've been able to finish the other one. Mm. It, 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 interdependency. Okay. It, it, I depend on you, you depend on me. Exactly. Yes. Okay. So we need to see. It's, it's a holistic thing, yeah. Okay. So assuming you are a minister of agriculture one day, what will be the hard decisions you make to promote agriculture in Ghana? Uh, given the resources, you are given the opportunity. What do you think must be the major decisions that you will take to promote agriculture beyond the lip services that we, we give to our, our constituents? If it comes to, I will just have to zoom the country mm -hmm. into their competitive advantage where there's misproduction. I know in this zone, this is a zone for misproduction. Mm -hmm. I will ensure, because the, another issue is our land system, okay. which affects agricultural production to even get a land mm -hmm. to farm is an issue. So I will make that decision that let's get banks mm -hmm. of land mm -hmm. group. So from my associations, let's have all the dedicated banks. Mm. Let's have dedicated companies. Mm. Zone the country into the competitive advantage. Mm. So I pick the north, I, I give you the serious, you are what? All necessary support that should go should into be production mm. will be channeled to that place. Okay. A, it will be a target driven. So if you are the, let's say, the district or regional minister, mm. in collaboration with the states, mm -hmm. will give a target to the region. Look, we need 100 or 1 million or 200 metric tons of maize from your, your region. Exactly. That's your target. Produce for us. Whatever it takes for you to produce, we need it from you. Mm. We move to the cocoa sector, mm -hmm. which zone the country into the cocoa region. Look, these are the regions that you are comparative advantage in terms of cocoa production. Mm -hmm. We need, let's say, 1.5 metric ton of cocoa. What mm -hmm. do you need? Mm -hmm. Let's go for it. We need vegetables. This zone, mm -hmm. you have what? The capacity to produce. Mm -hmm. We zone the whole area. We are giving you a, man, a mandate to produce S, Y, Z right. tons of for us. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, we should be able to zone. Then we should be able to now get off the case, mm -hmm. who assign that look in this zone um, of taking everything to put onto the market. Okay. We should be able to get processes mm -hmm. or encourage processes to come on board. Mm -hmm. So in all, we, there should be a fund. And that fund, when you assess it, you have to what? Return, mm -hmm. remit back into the fund. Exactly. I support you, you do the production, you then bring back the money bring it back. Mm. And it should be stringent. Because it shouldn't be a point that people will just see the fund as a means of making money. Mm -hmm. They go for it, and they, they just it. move around and mm -hmm. buy land cruises and mm -hmm. buy cars, mm -hmm. and there will be no production. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, you so assign. a proper monitoring evaluation. Monitoring evaluation. Process, yeah. So you come, we assign you the fund, mm -hmm. and you're in the zone. So we zone the country, and we produce. So at the end of the day, we know that, oh, our grains will be coming from the north. Mm -hmm. Our vegetables will be coming from the south mm -hmm. because we have a very good vegetable system in the Vota region, exactly. the Keta stretch, mm -hmm. where we can say, okay, we are, in, we are saying Vota region, give us vegetables to support the country. Mm. Whatever you will need strategically, we go to Vota region, we will sit with you, we will do everything that we are giving you the mandate, produce for us. Mm. Maize, we go to the Ejira enclave, mm -hmm. we go to the Sisala East and West enclave. You have the strength to produce maize for us. Mm. Go ahead, do it for us. Then we go also onto the uh, cocoa zone. Mm -hmm. We also have to encourage commercial agriculture. Exactly. That's the way because, for example, the irrigation system, if somebody is having a 60 hectare mm. and he irrigates, I mean, that is going to give you a huge production. Because mm -hmm. now what we are doing is like a subsistence. Everybody plants two, three acres, two, to three feed his family, family and very yes, little to sell. sell. Mm. We can still encourage that one okay. for production. But if still we encourage that one, that there will be enough food. And if you encourage the commercial production, there will be huge food, there will be abundance of food. Mm. Then at the end, we can also import mm -hmm. to other countries to get foreign exchange. Okay. It's strange that we are still importing tomato from Burkina Faso into exactly. the country. But onions we have onions. We have the comparative advantage to produce a lot even to import. Mm -hmm. So we should look at the zoning of the country and give mandate to each area to produce. And I think that will be the way forward.
That, that's a beautiful uh, manifesto <laughs> that you are being given the opportunity to be the average minister. Yeah. But uh, finally, do you see some resemblance or similarities in the plenty for food and jobs that the government has the, per the strategy that you have given within the shortest time? Do you see some similarities? What are the possible challenges um, that, that that plan has for the future of agriculture in Ghana? Um, I think one thing about the planting for food and job is that it has been able to catch up. It's like a household name mm. in the country, one. And two, why is it planting for food and jobs? So you plant, you get your food, you get your job. Mm. It's a good strategy. So, and it's also making the necessary input available. Mm. Because the planting for food and job is giving seed, it's also giving um, the uh, fertilizer. Mm -hmm. But there are other aspects that they can also include they have included certain chemicals, especially in the okay. control of the fall I'm going. Mm -hmm. So I would like to see if it can be a package. Mm. Yeah. Like if you are giving a whole package to the program. Mm. Like we don't give a wholesale fertilizer, but it should be in the form of a package that people can ascribe to the planting for food and job, but mm. they are providing a holistic package. So if okay. I'm going into the planting for food and job, I should come and say, well, I'm a company that will say, I'm going to look at me. Mm. I have all the protocol for maize production, okay. and I'm going to provide all the protocol for the maize for production, the maize production. Okay. so that the farmers within that zone will assess the whole protocol. Mm. Because if you give the farmer only the fertilizer and the seed, and you don't give him the insecticide, what happens? Mm. So let's give him a whole protocol okay. package. Then that can be an aspect of the planting for food and job that mm. companies can also look at. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, Mr. Akko, your final words to. Um, the entire country, um, the, your stakeholders, your, the farmers, the government, what to be your final message to everyone to make sure that we put agriculture on the top most priority of the country? Yeah, we always say agriculture on a sustainable basis. Mm. Um, that has so many meaning. That's for food security, environmental friendliness, mm. and also ensuring that the farmer has worth income into the farmer's pocket. Mm -hmm. So. There should be the conscious effort that everybody see agriculture production mm -hmm. as a business. An entrepreneur should be able to invest into agriculture. We don't need somebody to just say, I'm, I'm going there to sit and be doing agriculture. We can mm -hmm. have companies who invest into agriculture. Into agriculture. They okay. can partner uh, companies like mm -hmm. RMG Ghana Limited. Mm -hmm. I have my money but I want to invest in agriculture. How can I do it? Exactly. Then we say, okay, we have farmer groups here. So if it's a, a partnership, we have the financier, we have the input provider. Mm -hmm. Not only, we don't only provi provide input, we also give technical and agronomic support. Support, I see. So holistically, we can provide that support, we can provide the input, mm -hmm. the farmer will produce. Then we should have an off-taker who will be part of the group mm -hmm. who will also will off-take and sell because there should be a market for the produce. Mm -hmm. So she, we should all come together and see agriculture as a business. Okay. If we see agriculture as a business, then our agriculture production will increase up to the sky. Thank you so much, sir. Welcome, sir. We are so much privileged to, to have you and um, given us wonderful content on how to promote agriculture in Africa. Thank you. Viewers, this has been AgroLink and brought to you by the Association of African Universities. And today we visited um, RMG Ghana and we were privileged to speak to Mr. Um, Nya Kondela, who is the marketing manager at RMG. Thanks for watching.